Hi, this is um, a short note to Kath Viner and to Helen Lewis. Um, I've written both, both the New Statesman and The Guardian at their request, and I paid quite the price for it because you weren't really ready for the transition where a social dimension was added to political communication. So I was the function in the political economy that took political responsibility for the shifts that I've outlined in Playlist 1. But it turned out, as a consequence of, you know, natural institutional development, elite social closure, the emergence of a media and policy-making culture, you were not aware of those shifts, which we already knew by the time Ed Balls threw us under a bus, by the way. But so what had emerged over the latter half of the 20th, latter quarter of the 20th century was a parasitic dynamic. And it was a parasitic dynamic protected by elite institutions. So you identified as our representation. We didn't know the true nature of the dynamic. And there was no social dimension to political communication, so we couldn't challenge it. So that seemed pretty... So we didn't know there was a major problem. Well, we kind of did, I think, by the time 2010 came, but not major. And now we do. So you added a social dimension to political communication because the internet's your future. <laughs> yeah, you're only. Mm. <coughs> and in doing so, you made it very easy to deal with. And I wasn't really thinking about it like this. I took you all at face value because I was still there. The parasitic dynamic was completely effective in 2010 because I still actually saw you as my representation. I think you were still the newspaper I read, Kath. Which is why I was so delighted to be asked to write to read for you, really. Now, once a, parasit a parasitic dynamic is very easy to break, as soon as the host is aware of the power dynamics within the situation, it's pretty much broken. But once the host has said they are, they are aware of the relationship, it's not naturally occurring, it's not chosen, then it's broken. But to really break it, it really depends on the parasite's response. So, once the parasite behaves abusively, the parasitic dynamic is completely undone because the host has said they're not aware, the host has said it's not voluntary or wanted. And then the parasite has behaved entirely abusively, thus showing everyone that the, par the parasitic dynamic that they were relying on for life is gone. The parasite breaks the dynamic, not really the host. The host just has to walk off and do what they were doing all along. So a parasitic dynamic had held up our entire political economy. It turns out I didn't know this until you lot. And then you broke it. And while it was uncomfortable and I kept the blog, because even though I was talking to my friends online, the relentless targeting by a political party whose injury I'd identified, um, identified by living in reality, that's been pretty brutal. So I used my blog because it was largely quite useful that I could maintain a protective tool on the same platform as you. And so even though it's been miserable, I was always aware that what you were doing was breaking the parasitic dynamic that had upheld the entire neoliberal political economy, and now it's done. So I can't have a Twitter account, but that's kind of a good consolation prize. You're both locked in to this little death spiral on Twitter, you see those shifts in Playlist 1, if you don't accommodate them, the ones that existed in 2010, the rule of law that existed in 2010, you won't survive. Oh, and you also have to account for the eight years where you tried to undermine the rule of law and behaved abusively because you weren't aware of those shifts. I know it doesn't feel like you're going to have to account for that. You really are.